Be sure to check out the Evolve official Discord, where you can chat with the developers and play with the experts. So, you may have heard that Evolve has entered what they call Stage 2. It's a complete overhaul of the game's basic mechanics. Stage 2 takes a page from MOBAs. Maps now provide set spawns for wildlife, have buffs that appear over time, and better pathing for hunters and monsters alike. So let's say that you just picked up Stage 2 on Steam, and you want to try Monster. Well, where do you start? A lot of new Monster players don't really understand their objectives. It's supposed to be simple, right? Just run away from the hunters, eat and evolve to Stage 3, kill the hunters, or destroy the relay. What more is there to know? But that's not your only objective. There's more to it than that. When you start the game, you begin as a Stage 1 monster. Frankly, it doesn't matter which monster you pick. The advice I'm going to give you is pretty universal. At Stage 1, it's about speed over stealth. Do not sneak, and do not use sneak attack on wildlife. Move quickly, and eat fast. Use abilities to kill prey, and map knowledge is paramount. Any new player should take time to explore the maps and custom games against bots. The reason why is that wildlife now have set spawns. You can learn them and practice them, much like a jungler in League of Legends can. If you happen to attract hounds to your location, this is a signal that you are moving too slow and that you are feeding too long in one spot. This is a punishment to any monster because the hounds will alert the hunters to your location via their howls. You must develop a route which will refine your eating habits. Time your runs and try different approaches. Know when and where you intend to evolve. Don't forget to evolve on a fresh kill and use your senses to ensure that your position is secure. If you happen to get caught or don't, use what little burst you have to take down a lone hunter. Then gain some distance and evolve as swiftly as possible. Before I continue to talk about what you do at stage 2, I need to first introduce you to dome mechanics. In this game, hunters can apply a dome. Think of it as a portable arena rather than an actual net. This normally allows hunters to apply damage to a fleeing monster. Any hunter can deploy the dome and trap you inside of it. When you are at stage 2, you are at equal strength with the hunters. It is at that point that it becomes a challenge of skill and experience. Know that once a dome is up, there is only three things that will make it fall. The hunters win, the monsters win, or the dome time expires. In order for the hunters to win the dome, they need to pick away at the monster's raw HP. Every time they take out a significant chunk of your HP, a full 60 seconds is dropped from the dome timer. They win the dome if they land that single shot against your HP that makes the dome fall. Monsters can win the dome by downing hunters and claiming strikes. When you down a hunter inside a dome, it takes off 3 minutes and 30 seconds off the dome timer. Since the dome is just 5 minutes, all it takes is 2 strikes. The monster wins the dome if they claim the strike, which makes the dome fall. Rarely does the dome timer just run out, but it happens. There are instances where the monster can claim a strike, and the hunters manage to do a little damage against their HP, but the monster can still evade for several seconds until the dome finally falls. When that happens, no one wins the dome, and it's a draw. So earlier I mentioned strikes. As a monster player, it is your objective to claim as many strikes against the hunters as possible throughout the game. Each strike takes off a significant portion of their HP and permanently diminishes their health pool for the remainder of the game. Once a hunter has two strikes, the next time they are downed in battle, they will instantly be placed in the dropship. Now certain hunters can remove strikes from their allies. Hunters such as Lazarus should be prioritized in order for strikes to stick. Now we can talk about Stage 2. Once you evolve to Stage 2, you will begin to engage in dome combat more frequently. You will prioritize getting strikes on hunters, winning domes, and falling back. This is where skill and experience come into play. More advanced hunter teams will make this very difficult for you to achieve, but there are ways to turn the game into your favor. When you engage in combat, you can single out a hunter's class based on their coloration. Assaults are red, trappers are green, supports are yellow, and healers are blue. By default, the monster should focus down the healer first, followed by the support. But there are situations where this isn't always the case. Certain team makeups or a player's skill undermine this tactic. The more you play, the more you will be capable of devising ways to counter complex hunter compositions. One of the biggest changes between Evolve 1.0 and Stage 2 is the overall game time. It has been reduced to 12 minutes from 20. The removal of 8 minutes has increased the sense of urgency. Both monsters and hunters must now move faster than ever before. 
but the game timer has significant impact on other facets of the game. 1. Hunters win by default if the time expires. This rewards more patient teams who fight against very difficult monsters. 2. Wildlife respawns every few minutes based on the timer. 3. Elite buffs appear on albino wildlife throughout the course of the game in set locations. They spawn at various different intervals. Know that the game timer stops every time the monster engages in combat. For hunters, a strong defense is the only way to win against a very difficult monster, because time is always on their side. So I've spent a lot of time talking about Stage 2, but one question that you might ask is, when is it appropriate to evolve to Stage 3? If you are facing a truly challenging team, you can use Stage 3 as a way to outsmart them. It is your trump card. Use it wisely. Don't rush to it immediately. Here are some ways where you can use it to your advantage. You can fall back and collect a powerful elite buff, then evolve into Stage 3 and come back with additional power and force. You can bait the hunters into an overextended fight, flee, and then evolve right in front of the relay. Another way is if the hunters are very evasive and very tough to kill, you can punish them by destroying the relay if they flee too far. In order to destroy the relay, you must position yourself in front of it and hold down your attack button. This will begin an animation that dismantles the relay. Now I can finally talk about perks. Perks appear at the very beginning, right after you've chosen a monster on the selection screen. Once you have had a chance to practice and experience everything that I've talked about before, only then can you truly appreciate what perks offer and provide to you as a monster player. You can determine what you like best, and what best complements your favorite monster. Some monsters move faster than others, eat faster, climb faster, etc. Perks can complement you and make your monster more comfortable for you and your playstyle. Also know that perks tend to complement what a monster's mindset is. Every monster has a very different playstyle. If you are a Goliath, you're very aggressive. A brute force basher that can deal very high burst damage very quickly, but his combos can be very easily avoided. The Meteor Goliath is slightly different. The extended fire breath ability and extended charge ability means that he has greater damage over time rather than direct damage, which means that you need to be far more accurate with your combos. The Kraken is a long range sniper, uses altitude and distance as his key defense. His abilities have an obscene amount of range and his standard attack is very potent. The Elder Kraken is a much more in-your-face version of the Kraken. Range has been sacrificed for extreme power and area denial, meaning that teams which gather together can be punished very easily. Once more, accuracy is key. Not landing an ability on your target can cost you a kill. The Wraith is a very fast, hit-and-run type of monster. She specializes in mind games. For instance, she can move downed hunters and create traps and then use her very quick and powerful burst to bring down other prey. She is very hard to hit, but has little defense. A very defensive team can easily bring her down, but an overly aggressive team is easy prey for the Wraith. Did you know that you can pounce hunters while they are alone? This will lock them into an animation where they are unable to escape. The animation can only be broken by an ally who attacks you. Try using this when there is only one hunter left. This will help the game end far more quickly. When playing Evolve, you will quickly become familiar with what we call Skirting Hunters. This is a term which references more experienced hunters and their ability to use their environment to their advantage. They will often crawl up and down obstacles, trying to use the terrain to avoid your attacks. This is called Skirting. Skirting can only be countered by skill and practice, not to mention comboing your abilities in just the right way. There is no easy way to describe how to counter it, it comes with practice. Just be sure to expect it. When you see hunters skirting, and you see them skirting well, know that you're fighting some very experienced hunters, and they may prove to be a real threat to you. In that case, you might want to use cave systems. For certain monsters, cave systems can be a huge benefit, especially when facing certain hunters. Hunters like Hank are completely denied the ability to use orbital attacks against you. Having a roof over your head is very helpful for the early stage of your game. Also, this creates a lot of locations where you can pin hunters down, but be careful. A good dome can make it difficult for you to hide, so it's very give and take. Be wary when you're in a cave. Try to use it to your advantage as best you can. That's all the basic tips I have to provide for now. Go ahead and try them out. 
And don't forget to check out the Evolve official Discord where you can get more advice like this. So happy hunting, guys, and enjoy Evolve Stage 2. See you next time.